Hello, hi guys. How are you? Happy Sunday. It's Kel here. I uh, just want to pop on do a quick live and just talk to you about um, another thing we've got to deal with out here. Um, this horrible bastard of a uh, plant behind me. This stuff here is called Hudson Pear. It's got a, um, a flash name. Um, I think it's a punty, a tuna card or something like that. Well, it used to be. I don't know. We've been fighting this battle with this bloody plant for the last 20 four years 1996 actually found an old article and I'll post that up um, and it was about when we first realized how deadly and how bad this stuff was a um, little bit of background this stuff here comes from Mexico um, it was imported it got out here and it's just gone gangbusters since it loves the environment out here it loves the dryness it likes this loamy soil it also likes the ridges so it's just a real mongrel of a plant. It will feed off everything and it just drops its little prongs. So a bit of wind or an animal hits it or something like that. It gets disturbed, rolls a little bit further and digs its bloody um, roots in. Like it's so invasive and it's been here, like I said, for a lot of years. But there is a good story to it. Um, like I said, this plant has um, caused like, a lot of grief around where we live. It sterilized a lot of ground for mining, of course, but it's also um, stopped a lot of adjustment. It stopped a lot of um, people being able to even farm their land out here, you know, which is really piss poor, to be quite honest. Um, this plant, when I first came across it, um, it was only like a small plant, and then it just grows in this environment. It loves what we have out here. It loves a dry environment. Like I said, it comes from Mexico, so, you know, similar environments. It has the actual um, capability that it only needs one little prong to fall off and it can regrow into these plants. Now, I've got quite a few hundred acres here and I've been battling the bastard for years. Um, I'm a little bit, actually I'm quite disappointed to show you this because this is the land that I live on and um, it's been a battle that we've had for quite a few years and as people who live here, they know how hard it's been to keep on top of, like it's just got out of control. Um, last year there was a doco called um, from Only in Oz and Rhett Butler and his family and my dad was even on it as well did a uh, story about it and how and all the effects that it has. Um, I'm going to show you something really cool because uh, a couple of weeks ago when I got home I remember saying to the old boy I said Paulie I said I reckon that cactus is starting to look a little bit cactus. So what do you mean? I said, it's looking a little bit, you know, dried out and a little bit shitty. Now, normally when we go have a bit of a break over Christmas and come back, it actually loves, like, all this dry environment. So we'd, all, we'd always see, a, you know, a few more plants pop up here and there. Now, I've spent um, quite a long time, spent lots and lots of money, anyway. Um, but I actually went around and would dig it out by hand. Now, this stuff is really quite nasty to touch. Um... So we had a working bee a few years back and we went around the whole place, dug it all out, took it up, dried it out for a couple of months and then come back and burnt the bastard. All good, but one little bit. These little prongs that they have, they actually have seeds in them, hundreds and thousands of seeds on them. And even though you might get everything on top, the seed would fall into the ground and it would just regrow. Like I said, comes to Mexico, loves where we are and it's just gone woof. I don't know how much land it's sterilized. It'd be in the hundreds and thousands of acres. It's just gone boom. And we had a problem because then we went, um, well, sorry, they come up with a solution that we had to spray it. So you'd go down, you get the spray, you get the backpack, um, and then you would um, spray it and it would turn pink. Favorite color, but it would turn pink. And then you'd go, okay, it's dead wasn't dead it would take years for it to break down even when it's dead the, the spikes on it are just as bloody deadly you know they stick into you they stick into your cars through your boots like it'll go through anything when you pull it out it pulls your skin all the way out and it's it's a nasty bit of gear but I think what the worst thing for me was seeing the animals like see my kangaroos I've got pet kangaroos and I was you know they'd be there and they'd have it in their eyes and you know, we couldn't run stock anymore. I even had kids down here one day jumping on the trampoline and for some reason one of it ended up on the trampoline. We had to hold this poor kid down, my nephew, and hold him down and bloody pull, his, pull it out with a pair of pliers, you know. 
nasty shit, like really nasty. Anyway, one good thing is, um, like I said to Paulie, I said it looks a bit cactus, and while I was away last week, uh, the department turned up. Um, Dr. Andrew um, has led up this research team, and back in November, I think it was nine, uh, 2017, they found this little cochineal bug and they thought that they were going to start breeding it up and hopefully it would have a bit of an effect on it because the spray wasn't and it was long term and it was just getting further and further away like I'll show you a bit in a minute but it's it's disgusting it's quite it's out here everywhere anyway so they came up and they decided that they're going to start breeding up this bug and hopefully it'll have an effect and to be quite honest I was a little bit you know I didn't think Jesus himself could kill the bastard like it is it, would, it was so tolerant of everything um, and it was so hard to kill and dry out and burn and get rid of that, you know, I was a little bit sceptical that it wasn't going to work. So just over my neighbour's place over here, they had a bit of a breeding ground and they had this thing and they were breeding up these, this cochineal bug. I don't know the name of it. You can probably find out. I'll put a link in to a story which was done on the ABC recently about it and it's got some more facts about it. But it's actually over there and with all the dust and everything and I know the dust has been horrendous but it's actually picked up the bug and it's moved it over to my place and it's been killing off these plants and um, I'll just show you if I can um, thanks for um, the lives the other day and I'll get back on and do the comments I have a bit of technical difficulty I need like a D rock or someone to come up and help me do a bit of filming but um, yeah, I'm getting it sorted. So we'll see how this goes. I'll just pick this up and show you. So what it is, it's this tiny microscopic little bug, this cochineal bug, and it looks like little bits of pepper. And then it breathes up this little white cocoon thing. And then when the actual plant dies or, or the bug thinks, oh yeah, I've done my job, you know, woohoo, I've killed it. It climbs up to the top, spreads its little bloody wings and waits for the wind and moves on to the next one. Like it's just amazing and it's working. So round of applause yay um, I think that the issue is going to be now is when it all drops off um, how long it's going to take to break down and things like that like I said even when the plant is dead it is nasty so yeah all right I'll have a look and I'll show you uh, hopefully this will work ah. right let me turn this around I don't know if we can see any of this hopefully you can see those little white those little white little cocoons, little sack things. See how it started down in the middle? And now it's actually killing it from the inside out virtually. And these tiny little, I hope you can see that. Yeah, so there we go. I think it's been an amazing um, uh, success story. Um, next week, or sorry, this week on Thursday, they've got a public meeting for here in Kambora. Um, I'll put a post up for the um, the times and the dates and the flyer I was given. Um, as you can see at the back, I'll show you. Isn't that nasty? It's just everywhere. It just seems to be getting worse and worse and worse. But, you know, one good thing out of this drought now is that we've actually got a little bit of a success story. So really, really happy about it. Um, funny story. <laughs> a few years back, um, Dad and I were out specking. So those who don't know what specking is, um, you actually go out and you go walking around old ground looking at holes and I was there mucking around and um, didn't know that I had some in my boots and then all of a sudden I bent down to um, check out a hole and I got a piece in my ass <laughs> and I remember my old man running back to get the pliers because you need pliers to get it out I remember him running back and getting the pliers and I, th I thought god he's taking a long time and I thought what's he bloody up to then I realised he was looking for the phone to take a photo I thought I'll stuff you and I pulled it out Stung, not very nice, but um, yeah, for the people who've actually had it in them, they know what it's like. I've just driven down from home. So I actually, around my um, house and around my Airbnb, I actually go out quite often of a night and just do a bit of a circuit and I take a shovel out and a pair of welding gloves and try and pick it up um, because that's it, because you don't want it in your hands. And I don't know if you can see down there, I've actually got some in my tyre. So I'll take that home, pull out the pliers, get it out. And um, yeah, thanks for watching this live, guys. Um, and I'll see you tomorrow. Bye.